You're listening to Ask the Expert on Sprott Money News. Well, hello again from Sprott Money News, SprottMoney.com. It is August 21st. As this is getting recorded, it is time for the August edition of the Ask the Expert segment. I'm your host, Craig Hemke. I got a new guest for you this month, someone you're going to want to get to know. His name is Larry Leopard. Uh, Larry is a money manager and a uh, someone you should probably follow on Twitter and get to know. And so it'll be fun to visit with him over the next few minutes. Larry, thank you for taking some time to join me. Hey, Craig, it's great to be with you. I think I was a long time ago, but it's been a while. So it's nice to see you again. Uh, yeah, you know, the old guy starts to lose yeah, track. Right? Good to have you back. <laughs> um Hey, and before we get started, uh, like I said, it's the 21st of August. The Sprott Money Summer Sale continues for just a few more days. So you should be sure to visit Sprott Money and check out the deals they have on all types of metal, bullion, gold, silver, even some platinum. But even after the sale's off, great deals will continue. Sprott Money is a company you should always check anytime you're in looking for some uh, physical precious metal to add to your stack. SprottMoney.com or call them at 888 888- Eight six one zero seven seven five. Also, before we start, Larry, tell everybody a little bit about what you do for a living, and again, where they can find you on Twitter. Yeah, sure. Just quickly, I manage a fund that focuses on sound money, um, mainly gold and silver, gold and silver miners. Um, I uh, I'm on Twitter a lot. I, I we were joking earlier. I'm, I'm old man yells at central bank, just like Craig. <laughs> So you can uh, just under my name on Twitter. And then my website is ema2.com. Um, free quarterly updates on uh, how our fund is doing and what we see going on. Also commentary on different companies and so forth. It's all free. Uh, join our mailing list. We won't spam you. Um, so yeah, that's me. I've, uh, I've been doing this since, well, I've been managing money my entire career. As I said to Craig before the camera started, um, I, I was radicalized for sound money in 2008. So basically, when uh, when they bailed out the banks and printed, you know, trillions of dollars, uh, I realized that what I had earned wasn't going to hold its value. And I had to address that. And so I pivoted and became uh, all sound money all the time from both, uh, you know, arguing about it financially and the world trying to make, you know, push us back to a sound money standard and also the fund. So. And you have 100,000 some odd Twitter. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of them are probably bots. I got, <laughs> yeah, of, I got a lot of cute Asian girls that DM me all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, with the, yeah, interesting web addresses you're supposed to click and that sort of yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. I see those they shows. Ask how my, my trade followers. is going and you know, lots of things like that. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> that does not detract from the quality of information you put on your Twitter. Oh, account, you're being so I encourage, yeah. encourage everybody to give you a follow. Um, Larry, I got a couple things I think we should talk about here uh as we move into the latter part of August and the end of summer. We're kind of wrapping up the dog days, you know, American traders are trying to squeeze in one last vacation, maybe before school starts and yeah. European traders are all on holiday, you know, in the yeah. South of France doing what they do. It's going to start getting interesting, though, yes. as we get toward the end of this month and into the back third of the year. Um, as we make our way through the dog days, though, I'm sure there are a few things that have caught your either on your radar, whether it's Japanese bonds or uh, liquidity issues and bankruptcies in China, rates the highest they've been in 15 years here in the U.S. What's on your radar, Larry? What do you well, want? Well, it's all the things you mentioned, actually. I mean, the 10-year is pushing up against its high from last year. You know, the one year is close to making new highs. And this is in the U.S. Um, U.S. stock market, some of the leaders have gotten shot. You know, Apple is off its high. Uh, the, 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 you know, the special seven aren't doing quite as well as they were doing. Obviously, yeah, trouble in China. Uh, the Japanese announcing they're going to loosen the peg on their yield curve control. And of course, the, the yen dollar rate, um, you know, the yen losing value against the dollar, all of that threatens to mess up the the current, you know, the yen carry trade. I, I Somebody on Twitter had a great line. They said, uh, the JPY is the ATM in the lobby of the casino. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. People go and borrow in yen because it was free. Um, and so, you know, a lot of things to watch, Craig. I mean, obviously, uh, the prices of the two, you know, sound money assets, um, gold, silver, and Bitcoin, or three sound money assets, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. I watch all of those very carefully. Um, you know, and I think Jay Powell is, is uh, he's flying himself into a box canyon here. He doesn't realize it yet. You know, I talked about this pre, pre-show. pre um, You know, he's riding high. He's, he's had a bunch of tailwinds, and, and the lag effect hasn't kicked in yet. And so he's thinking that uh, he's probably thinking he's pulled this one off. And I would kind of say not so fast. 
Um, I think I think we got trouble coming, and it's it's probably not very far away based on the signs I'm seeing. What would be the ramifications of some of this in the weeks ahead? You know, the Chinese like Evergrande, you know, and and you read the stuff back Chinese real estate and the lack of liquidity there, or the dollar yen depreciating the point where the Bank of Japan has to intervene. What would be some of the? How would that ripple around the globe if there are issues? Well, it's hard. It's hard to say exactly because there's just so many moving pieces. But yeah. but fundamental issue here, in my view, is that you cannot. They cannot continue to keep this system going without a return to some sort of monetary accommodation or printing, and that so that that is inevitably going to have to happen, or they're going to have a deflationary collapse. And all one needs to do to come to that conclusion is to go and look at the chart of U.S. federal interest expense and look at the curve of that chart and how it's going straight up. And what Powell is going to realize is that the way he's tried to address inflation by raising interest rates, that doesn't really solve the problem. The problem is more supply related than it is cost of money related. And as a result of that, he's, he's making he's like a pilot in a, in a dive or in a, you know, he's lost control. Um, and he's pulling back on the stick and he's making the he's making the spin tighter um, because every time he raises interest rates, it, it, federal interest expense goes up, federal interest expense goes up, deficits get larger, deficits get larger. They got to sell more bonds. We're already seeing there's no demand for the bonds since 2014. Foreigners have been net sellers. The Japanese are going to sell bonds to defend their currency. The Chinese are going to sell bonds to defend their economy. And so we're going to have continually higher interest rates. You know, I think the big mistake the market is making in general, I mean, I'm just shocked when I see no term premium in the longer treasuries. And also when I see the five year out treasury uh, inflation swap rates in the in the mid twos. I mean, the world clearly thinks we're going back to a world of two and a half percent inflation. I don't think we're going there. I think inflation is cooked in. And I think the deflationary impulse that we've had was enormously helped by, you know, the Powell or I mean, the, um, you know, the Biden drawing down the strategic petroleum reserve without yeah. without all that excess oil oil would be 120 right now and we would never have gotten the the pullback in inflation that we've got well you can only do that once the reserve is drawn down and as we all know shale oil is peaking if not rolling over in most of the large shale fields and so i think inflation is here to stay i think we reached peak deflation sometime in 2020 the beginning of the covid crisis i think we've now entered an inflationary era and I think most investors are making the classic mistake of investing in the rearview mirror and recency bias. And, you know, I understand it because we've had 40 years of deflationary world. And, mm -hmm. you know, technology is extremely deflationary. The China labor pool coming into the world market was extremely deflationary. The technology is going to continue. The China labor pool is starting to get disgruntled and they want more earnings. And so in my opinion, all of these things are going to collide and we are going to have another financial crack up that's going to make 2008 look tame, which is hard to believe. But I think that's what's coming. And as you and I discussed pre-show, I mean, I think the next print, Powell is going to have to reverse. And, you know, in order to quell the next crisis, it's going to take 10 trillion instead of eight or nine or 15 right. trillion. The Fed balance sheet is going to a higher number. And what we're seeing here, Craig, in my opinion, is the death of fiat currency. And the, the end, you know, it, it's, it's basically a sovereign debt crisis. Mm -hmm. And they, they'd like us to think they have it all under control, but they do not have it under control. Right. They're right. pretending like they do, but they don't. And of course, it's very difficult for all of us, uh, those of us who invest in precious metals and the precious metal stocks in particular, because they've just been hammered. And, and I know why, because the cost of all these mining companies are going up consistently because there really is real inflation in all their inputs. And, you know, the five year out projections, I've got Wall Street average five year out projections for gold are lower than it is today. And, you know, the odds, in my opinion, the odds of gold being lower in five years than it is today, are, they're like zero. I mean, gold is going to take out twenty one hundred. It's going to squirt to three thousand so fast people are, heads are going to spin. And ultimately, it needs to go to four thousand, five thousand, ten thousand to balance all the additional money that's been printed. It is as cheap as it was in 71 is as cheap as it was in 2020. Uh, you know, Rosenzweig and Goring just had a great report, which is free on the internet. And it, they talk about this. And, you know, in, in both of those cases, in 71, it went up 22x. And in 2000, it went up 7x. So, you know, I, I fully expect that this time it's from where it is today, $2,000 an ounce, well, below it today, obviously, below 1900, actually. 
you know, I fully expect it's going to go up, you know, three, four, five, six X in the next five years. And and that's going to have an enormous impact on all of our stuff. Yeah. Well, and as you said, Larry, uh, Powell has been able to kind of skate by, especially yeah. in the last six months. And right. I, it seems as if whether it's the media or everybody in the market wants to let him because everybody has their own uh, uh, their own self-important, you know, needs that they want. Well, I want the market to keep going up. So I'm going to live sure. in this fairy tale land of making it seem like everything's okay. It'll be interesting um, to see what now happens these next couple of weeks. And that's the next thing I want to ask you about. We've got uh, Powell and all the other central banking heads from around the world are going to be in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Later on this week, Powell's going to speak on the 25th, give his big keynote address, you know, every word is going to be parsed. Um, yep. I, would, what would you, I mean, do you, is there wise to even have expectations about what he might say? Uh, no, it's really it not. More... I mean, I, I think it's going to be more of the same. I mean, the other thing that's going on is got this BRICS conference and they may come out with some kind of a, I think, I don't think they've got it ready yet, but I think they're going to imply that they're moving toward perhaps a brick currency backed by a precious metal, you know, an underlying precious metal. And I, you know, Look, I think that we will be able to read between the lines on what Powell says, but I think in general, they are under the illusion that they have this under control. And um, and and therefore they will not, you know, we won't see the radical change we need for our stuff to work until that illusion is shattered. And I'm extremely confident that that illusion is going to be shattered. I'll tell you what I'm not confident about is I'm not confident about the time frame. I mean, it yeah. should and could kind of happen now, and it kind of feels like it might happen now. I mean, I, let me draw a comparison. Um, I thought it was happening when Silicon Valley Bank, you know, went tits up. Yeah. And um, and then, of course, they papered it over the BTFP. But I thought that was it. This I was very much alive and very much invested in um, 2007 and eight, And I was actually personally short and uh, not my fund, but I was personally short Bear Stearns. Um, when it failed in March of 2008. And I thought that was it. I thought it was all over. Um, but it wasn't. That was, you know, the beginning of what led to the GFC, you know, six to nine months later. And to me, Silicon Valley Bank is the same kind of thing. Yeah. Well, they've taken rates, they've taken real rates incredibly high, you know, up to five and a half percent. Well, they've taken the nominal up to five and a half percent, which is a huge move on a real basis, too. And as a result of that, you know, th there's a lag and, and that's going to come and that's going to hit. And so my gut is it probably hits this fall, but it could be next spring. My partner thinks it could be a year, year and a half. And it could be. I mean, who the hell knows? But it's it's clearly coming, you know, in terms of, quote unquote, what I would call financial distress. And and what we know for sure, you know, it doesn't matter what the Fed says. I mean, they said inflation was transitory. They said they weren't thinking about thinking about raising rates. And then we saw what they did. Right. What we also know is when push comes to shove, I mean, we also know that, you know, um, um, Dodd Frank said that there would never be another bank bailout. That's what black letter law, Dodd Frank, we are not going to bail out the banks anymore. The depositors are going to take a haircut. That's what's going to happen. Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic, the entire banking system is in trouble. Looks like they're all going to go down. $17 billion that the FDIC can't cover. And guess what? So, you know, you can't it's it's are you going to believe, you know, you're lying eyes or are you going to believe them? Right. Right. And so so what's going to happen is there is going to be an event, a credit event, probably in the markets where this, you know, the, the bond market, the U.S. bond market or the Japanese bond market, something is going to get broken very badly. And there's going to be contagion as a result of it. And Powell is going to be forced in order to keep the markets functioning, because, you know, we know that when push comes to shove. Mm -hmm. They would rather keep the markets functioning than let the system self-correct and go into right. a 1929 style depression. And when that occurs, gold is going to take off like a scalded dog. I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's going to be unbelievable. And his credibility is going to be in tatters, as it should be. Right. But but we don't know when that's going to occur. Yeah. And I think the outer, outside window of that is two years. So I'm prepared to wait that long. I mean, there was a my partner reminds me of the great book on Stockdale, who was a prisoner of war over in um, the Hanoi Hilton. And he always said, you know, the guys who didn't make it were the guys who were like, oh, we'll be out in a month. We'll be out by Christmas. We'll be out in six months or whatever. So they didn't make it. They didn't make it because they kept hoping for it and they kept getting disappointed every time they didn't make it out. And the guys who made it were the guys who said, I don't know if we're ever going to get out. I don't care. I'm just going to figure out how to live here and just hang on as long as I possibly can. Those guys made it. 
And all I hope is that I don't time out before it happens. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I don't think I will. Because I think the math is such that it's going to happen probably within two years and maybe a lot sooner. So I, I, how's that? <laughs> I never thought of myself as Admiral Stockdale and the Hanoi Hilton uh, right. being in the precious metals all these years. But suddenly, as feel, a metaphor, think about it, Craig. Doesn't it feel um, that way? Think about how long but, I mean, you and I were talking about this. We've been suffering in this shit since 08, right? Right. It's right. Been rough, you Larry, know? I, you know, and it's funny. You mentioned. Um, uh, the stuff catching them by surprise, whistling past the graveyard, you know, and the media plays along with it. Yeah. It was on March the 7th of this year. Right. Powell's on Capitol Hill in his, right. his semi-annual yes. yes. Humphrey yeah. Hawkins testimony. Right. And he's so, up so there stop. talking about, oh, yeah, this March meeting in two weeks, we might go 50 basis points. Everything's so great. Yeah. March the 10th, Silicon Valley starts to blow up. Right. So you just never know. Uh, right. when something is going to come out of the woodwork and right. said, but I think I just can't imagine you're not right. They have shown their cards in the new paradigm since 2008. They will always choose to save the economy and save the banks. And, and you know, Larry, hey, next year's an election year in the U.S. as well. They're going to get a lot of political pressure, too. Of course, there's that. And, you know, as you can see, it's forgiving student loans. I mean, it's, it, look, it's all all roads lead to monetary debasement, which is why. All investors need to hold hard assets, real estate, right. you know, gold, silver, et cetera. So. And, and as we wrap up, um, I, you know, and, and we try to look ahead. I mentioned uh, the election coming up in the U.S. next year. That's going to be hotly contested and it's going to get ugly and, you know, uglier and uglier. Um, but, you know, you, I want to get back to the lagging effects of the economy and, and how ultimately this does force things out of control because i think it's too easy i know it's easy for me I, I would assume it's easy for every for people that don't necessarily follow the metals on a daily basis to just yeah. think well you know the media says it's going to be okay my stockbroker says it's going to be okay my brother-in-law that i was talking to over a barbecue last week he says everything's great but the math is a math larry right. um right. just if, if you could um, it, 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 how are you positioning yourself for that math, because we know the higher interest rates mean higher interest payments and more debt and everything accelerates that more quickly. Do you yeah. just, again, continue to take that patient long run? Yeah, I just I just buy I buy good assets when they're cheap. I mean, in the gold and silver mining space, it's stunning how cheap these stocks are. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. I mean, our fund is open. You know, we take investors, anyone with 200,000 or more, you can join our fund. I mean. We're buying things at two or three times cash flow, you know, and we're getting inflows in this environment. So some people, you know, the people who who, who FOMO chased into our fund are now down substantially 50, 60 percent. In some cases, they came in at the peak in 2020. You know, these 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 junior miners are extremely volatile. Yeah. But on the upside, I mean, in, in 19 in 20 in 2019, we went up 97 percent in 2020. 2020, we went up 120 percent. So when they work, they really work and they're about to really work. So. You know, I just did a private deal in a mining company, and I will continue to do that in this environment because they're giving this stuff away and it's being left for dead. And 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 people still think, I mean, sadly, because it takes people a long time to learn things and they have to get beaten over the head by it. People still sadly think that this economy works and yeah. that this system is not broken and that, you know, OK, well, and they're just and they're relieved, you know, COVID's gone. You know, even though mm -hmm. you know, they even though they did a lot of criminal stuff, you know, they're going to stop doing criminal stuff. Well, you know, hello, wake up. You know, I mean, you got to just wake up to this fact and, you know, and, and protect yourself from it. I mean, that's that's all you can do. Now, you've also got to recognize that there are times in this game where, you know, you feel like Tom Brady in, in Houston and, you know, Atlanta's winning, you know, 27-3 yeah. and, and it's the third and it's the third quarter. You know, and it, and it, I mean, and, and as a as a gold stock mining investor, frankly, that's how I feel. We got to get our ass out of this hole, but we're going to. I mean, it's it's going to happen because because at the core of it all, we are fundamentally right. We are. We're just right. You cannot print your way to prosperity, yeah. or else right. Venezuela would be the most prosperous country in the world. So would Zimbabwe. Right. So would Weimar Germany. So would all of these countries. And that's where we're going. The difficulty here is that. With a big nation that won World War II and has a lot of power and a lot of momentum, it takes longer. And so, you know, we've got to be patient. And that, that goes back to the Stockdale 
that goes back to the stock yep. deal. You know, yep. look, we're just we're in the right place. We know we're in the right place. It's coming our way. You know, it's just I mean, we got to we got to live our lives and, and, and be of good cheer and uh, recognize that our savings will be worth a ton of money someday. And we will be rewarded for this. And of course, a lot of people saying, oh, you guys got lucky. No, we didn't. I was saying to my daughter this morning, I mean, I, I you know, in 10 or 15 years, you and I are going to have a totally different problem, which is we're going to have too much money. <laughs> I, I, I hope it, I hope it doesn't screw us up. Too many, yeah, <laughs> whether they're dollars or whatever they are. Then. Well, yeah, it'll be it might be denominated in the new yeah. dollar. It'll be gold backed or something. But we'll but, have a lot of it. But we'll have it a lot of it. We're going to be yeah. and we're going to be fine. So, you know, this this like all seasons. There's a time. There's a time and a season for everything. Yeah. You know. So um, we just got to be patient, man. Yeah, that's all we got to do. You recognize the math, and yep. you use, like you said, in in your daily work and your money management, you buy yep. when things are on a dip and you add to your stack and right. it doesn't matter how big your stack is. You look right. at the weakness and you understand where this is headed. Right. And you protect yourself. That's exactly right. And, and these, these things, I mean, this a stack of silver, I mean, it's going to, it's going to be stunning what a stack of silver is worth. Right. I mean, look, the silver market is already broken. I mean, you can't right. buy a coin for anything close to the spot price. Right. I mean, and that tells you something. I mean, the, the, the evidence of a broken system is so substantial and so overwhelming and so visible everywhere. Um, this is not, you know, you and I are not young guys. I mean, this is not the country we grew up in. Right. Right. I mean, we've got, you know, we've got mass poverty. We've got mass um, unemployment. We, you know, they, I mean, as many people have pointed out, you know, it's easy to say unemployment's low and 40% of the population doesn't work anymore. They're capable of working. They just don't work. We've defined them as not looking for work. Therefore, they're not unemployed. Well, right. you know, no. I mean, it's you know, it's just the whole damn thing is a lie. What, what's not a lie what's, is, that, is that gold and silver are sound money. Right. And, and um, you, you can't and build a, the foundation of your financial system can't be built upon lies. That's, you know, you might that's have, exactly you know, right. Sandcastles. But it has been for a long time. Right. Right. You know? So we will continue to do our thing, Larry, and I hope you continue to do your thing. And I hope I people will. continue to visit Sprott Money and add to your stack, even if it's just, you know, a, a couple of coins or a tube of eagles or something like that. Uh, the value that physical metal will ultimately provide is I, I, I just can't even uh, can't even describe, you know, because we don't know yeah. exactly yeah. how crazy things will get. But... I'll tell you, before we go, there's a great story. It's, I, I found it just amazing. It's a fellow who was a World War II vet, and he graduated, or he got back home, and he went to work as a machinist in L.A., Los Angeles. And so he was working, you know, aerospace business. He was, he was a machinist, and he did very well as a machinist, and you can get paid. That's a high, high blue-collar, high-paid blue-collar job. He took every dollar he made. This is in the 50s and 60s. He took every excess dollar he had, and he bought uh, gold coins, you know, $35 a coin, right? And he put them in ammo boxes that he had stored that he would saved from World War II, and he put them in the put the ammo boxes in the basement, and um, and he died in the eighties at some time. And um, his kids, you know, and of course, gold reset from thirty five bucks to you know, it, it, I guess it, he died in the nineties. Whatever. Long story short, turns out the guy had about ten million dollars worth of gold in his yeah. basement. Yeah. Just just on a working salary, buying it at thirty five bucks. Yep. Yep. It, it protects purchasing power. Yes. Didn't Good story. his dollar savings. Yeah. And that's, yeah. another. I mean, that's a hard lesson, by, you know, for people to learn because you have to, it kind of goes outside of what you've always been taught. You just keep money in the bank, you know, and that's safe. Right. No, no, not really. Not, not, you, you did if the system was, was sound, but the system right. is sound. Right. Well, please, everybody, uh, be sure to check out Sprott Money and thank them for this content by visiting their site, keeping them on your favorites list. Or really, you can just give them a like or a subscribe on whatever channel you've been watching. That helps them cast a wider net. And obviously, thank you, Larry, for spending some time with me. This has been a fabulous oh, it's always a pleasure. discussion. It's always a pleasure, Craig. <laughs> yeah. I love your I love your moniker, Turd Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even my mother, before she passed, used to call me Turd. I, I'm stuck with it now. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> anyway, funny, thank you, Larry. Those are funny skits. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll have some more content for you before the month of August is out. 